Hello everyone, welcome to scardia.com and in our second section of the lecture topic acute pelvic infection, we will talk about pelvic inflammatory disease. In this section, we will talk about what is pelvic inflammatory disease, what are the risk factors, causes and what are some protective factors for pelvic inflammatory disease. What's the pathology of pelvic inflammatory disease and what are the clinical features and how it presents in the patient. Then first, what is pelvic inflammatory disease? Pelvic inflammatory disease is a spectrum of infection and inflammation of upper genital tract organs typically involving the uterus, endometrium, fallopian tubes, ovaries, pelvis, peritoneum and surrounding structure. So it's this infection and inflammation that can involve any structure or any organ of the female reproductive system. And besides that, it can also involve peritoneum. Peritoneum is the covering of the structures present in the uh, female reproductive tract. And it can also involve the surrounding structures because once infection can spread, uh, it can involve the adnexal organs or it, it involves the structures present in the surroundings. So it's a serious condition because if it can spread, it can cause serious consequences. So in this diagram, you can see this is the healthy female reproductive system. And you have the fallopian tube, uh, there is a uterine body, ovary, and then vaginal canal. But if there is pelvic inflammatory disease present in the female genital tract, you can see there is a pus all around the uh, vagina and then endometrium and it can even present in the fallopian tube and ovaries so this is the picture of the uh, uh, genital tract with the uh, infection or uh, inflammation and this is the picture of the normal female reproductive tract so different causes of the pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease can be due to different uh, procedures performed on the uh, reproductive system uh, like laparoscopy, uh, laparotomy, uh, cystoscopy. All these are the procedures that can lead to uh, inflammatory diseases. Then uh, infections surround Surrounding infections like infection present in the appendix, which is appendicitis, can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. And then after delivery and abortion, if there is any injury or trauma, or if the abortion is performed under uh, unhygienic condition, that's very, very common cause leading to the pelvic inflammatory disease. Or if there is intra a, a uterine device for contraception, it can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease also because it can cause damage to the lining of the endometrium and it can cause scarring of the endometrium and it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. Then some risk factors that can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease is uh, uh, menstruation, uh, especially unhygienic, unsanitary conditions uh, during the uh, menstruation or so that's, that can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. Then multiple sexual partners can also lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. If there is absence of contraceptive pill use, so that can lead to uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. History of uh, previous history of PID can lead to recurrent PIDs also. Intrauterine devices can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. 
and then the area where there is high prevalence of sexually transmitted diseases, it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. So these are some risk factors that can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. Some protective factors that can prevent against PIDs is uh, barrier methods like condoms, diaphragms with spermicide uh, can prevent the penetration of microorganisms and it can protect against the pelvic inflammatory disease. Oral steroidal contraceptives have got two uh, preventive aspects. So how can the oral uh, contraceptive pills protect against the um, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease? It can thick the mucus. Thickening of the mucus prevent the uh, pre penetration of the bacteria. And then another mechanism by which they can protect against pelvic inflammatory disease is there is a decrease in the duration of menstruation or uh, that can help cause, uh, create a shorter interval of bacterial colonization. So that's the another important uh, mechanism by which it can protect against pelvic in inflammatory disease. And then monogamy or having a partner who had vasectomy also can protect against pelvic inflammatory disease. So protective factors mainly uh, oral contraceptive pills which can thicken the mucus and protect against the penetration of microorganism and it can also shorten the menstruation cycle and due to shortening of the menstrual cycle uh, there is is more shedding of the endometrium and that more shedding of the endometrium can uh, protect against the pelvic inflammatory disease. Some other uh, factors that can be protective is pregnancy, uh, menopause and then vaccines against hepatitis B and human papilloma virus. Pathology of the uh, pelvic inflammatory disease is uh, if there is, is suppose infection starts in the tubes, infection of the tube is known as salpingitis, acute salpingitis, which is the inflammation of the uh, fallopian tube. This salpingitis can lead to pyosalp. Things. Pio is pus and this there is formation of pus in the fallopian tube. That pus or infection can lead to ovaries, cause ovarian abscess. From the ovaries it can lead to uh, peritoneum which is the covering of the uh, all the organs present in the abdomen. Uh, so it can lead to the peritoneum cause peritonitis and then it can lead to pelvic abscess. Once it involves the peritoneum it can spread to adjacent organs and adjacent structures also. So pelvic inflammatory disease, any organ which is involved, if it's tube, uh, salpingitis, if it's in the vagina, vaginitis, if it's in the cervix, cervicitis, so it can spread to the adjacent area from there and can lead to the formation of pus formation of scars and then spread of infection to different parts of the body if it reached to the bloodstream or the lymph nodes. Next, some clinical features of acute pelvic inflammatory disease. Fever is very, very common. Uh, usually the patients come and they complain of lower abdominal pain and there is fever also, which is more than 38 degree uh, Celsius. Then there is bilateral, both sides lower abdominal tenderness with radiation to the legs. Then there is abnormal vaginal discharge, uterine bleeding, dyspironia, painful sexual intercourse is 
very very common feature of pelvic inflammatory disease then on bimanual examination when the cervix is moved patient feel pain on cervical motion and there is tenderness so on pelvic examination there is very bad tenderness and on bimanual examination on also uh, there is tenderness present and this is very very common feature of the pelvic inflammatory disease next once the after uh, manual examination when the vaginal examination is performed there is usually the di discharge purulent discharge from the vagina then also there is um, uh, external urethral meatus is congested and there is discharge of pus then speculum examination of the vagina shows congested cervix cervix is red and there is discharge from the cervix also and by manual examination reveals bilateral tenderness uh, which increase when there is movement of the cervix so all these uh, especially with pelvic inflammatory disease fever discharge and pain on examination is these are the three very very common uh, signs and symptoms or presentation of patient with the pelvic inflammatory disease so that was all about the pelvic inflammatory disease so thank you for watching scardia.com